Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C A G F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Landtronics, maker of the XPrint server. Print from your iPad, your iPhone, or any iOS device to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the code twit to receive free shipping on your order. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 32 of i5 for the iPhone. Hey, we've had a great run. 32. It's going to be good. I'm Sarah Lane, and this is the delightful program where we pick five of the best iPhone apps, news, tips, and tricks, and pass the savings on to you. Ready? Any marks? Get set. Go. Number one. How would you like the world to feel a little bit more like your own guided trivia tour? An app called Field Trip that's actually made by Google and was previously only available on Android is now in the iOS App Store and designed to give you lots of information about the world around you. Here's how it works. Once you install the app, Field Trip runs in the background and then automatically pushes you information about nearby businesses, where you might want to shop or get a bite to eat or maybe that famous movie scene that was shot in the building next door. When you get close to something interesting, Field Trip will notify you. If you have a headset or Bluetooth connected, it can even read the information to you. That's kind of cool. Field Trip can also tell if you're driving and then tell you about cool stuff around you as you pass it. You're in charge of how often Field Trip pipes up, by the way. You can set the frequency to more or less. It's totally up to you. You might not want to be bombarded, but you're in control here. I prefer the map view as well, but there is a list view. Now, obviously, Google's in the business of pointing you to the internet in general, right? That's kind of what Google does. And Field Trip works in a similar way. They've got partners like Songkick, Daily Secret, Cool Hunting, Zagat, Inhabitat. They're all providing data to Field Trip. You might be familiar with some of those, some of those names. Field Trip just basically passes it along to you. It's free, full of knowledge, and I think it's worth a try. Number two, got a great duh tip from Elizabeth in St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands. Sounds like a really nice place to live, Elizabeth. She writes, anytime a word doesn't come up the way I want it to, like contractions, like don't or isn't, I add them to the keyboard shortcuts. I also made a keyboard shortcut for my name and other names I write often, like E-L-I for Elizabeth. Lastly, and very helpful, I created a shortcut for my username and email address. Very cumbersome to type in a long email address, but now I only have to type a few letters. Ah, this is really actually a very, very helpful tip. I totally agree, Elizabeth. I hate typing out my email address, and I feel like I have to do it all the time because I'm always signing up for things, and it's Sarah at Sarah Lane. So now I can make a shortcut for something like Sarah at Sarah Lane .com, Sarah Lane Rocks. That's a username I use all over the internet. i5 at twit.tv. All addresses and usernames that I really shouldn't have to write out all the time. This goes for anything more than a few letters that you hate pecking out on a regular basis. Thanks, Elizabeth. Number three, speaking of keyboard shortcuts, how many of you have been burned by autocorrect and accidentally sent a text or email that didn't really make a whole lot of sense and then you felt really dumb because you didn't look it over ahead of time and you said, damn you autocorrect. All of us, I know. There's a whole website dedicated to this stuff. More than one, probably. And although the best advice is probably that you should just be triple checking anytime you send anything, that's not always realistic in these busy on-the-go times of ours. We're on the go. We can't always proof ourselves. But you know you can just turn off autocorrect, right? Yeah, that's actually an option. Under settings, general, and then keyboard, right up at the top, you've got a few options. You can toggle on and off auto capitalization, auto correction, auto spell check, caps lock, even that period shortcut where if you double tap the space bar, iOS will insert a period followed by a space because it assumes that you're done with a sentence. All of these options are straight up personal preference. For example, 
I tend to type in all caps for effect when I'm chatting with certain friends. I want them to feel like I'm really yelling at them. So I like mine on. But I also find that auto capitalization is always screwing me over when I go to edit something I've already written in the middle of the sentence because then the iPhone thinks I'm starting a new sentence and then I have to jump through hoops to make sure the inserted word is lowercase. Does that happen to you? For me, it's easier just to turn auto caps off. We've gotten a few emails from folks who have had the same annoyance, so hopefully this helps you too. Play around with these options and see which ones are right for you. Hey, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Landtronics, maker of the XPrint server. Have you ever wanted to print a document or file from an iPhone? It should be easy, right? Well, XPrint server enables wireless printing from not only your iPhone, but your iPad or your iPod Touch. And I advice, it eliminates the need to print through apps or install software that you really just don't have time for, or email yourself documents for printing. That's cumbersome. It shouldn't have to work that way. And the best part is it works with the USB or network printer you already own, wired or wireless. Just open it up, plug it in, and print. It's honestly that easy. Home Edition is 99 bucks and supports up to eight USB and two network printers. If you want unlimited network printers, you'll want the Network Edition for $199. It's perfect for a home or office and includes network admin features like Active Directory support. You've got printers, you've got iOS devices, they really should be talking to each other, it shouldn't be that hard. And if you've got XPrint Server from Lantronics, you are now compatible. If you're interested, go to xprintserver.com slash twit for more information and to buy. Of course, we got a special offer because that's how we roll. Just use the coupon code twit to receive free shipping on your order. Free shipping. That's a gift from us to you. Remember, xprintserver.com slash twit. And at checkout, enter the coupon code twit. Time for number four. So say you're out on a hike and your friends are in front of you and then there's a beautiful field behind you. It'd be kind of nice to get everything in a single photo, right? An app called DoubleCam, that's spelled D-B-L-C-A-M, kind of, sort of achieves this. You just take a photo and DoubleCam will use both your front and rear cameras to snap what's in front of you and what's behind you, depending on how you positioned it. And the finished product is a single image showing off both sides of the story so to speak. The results are hit and miss. I did a little Flickr search for the hashtag double cam. I found a lot of selfie photos in bedrooms and they kind of are not that interesting. A couple of my own tries were extremely unflattering, not even gonna show them to you, but you don't actually have to be in the photo. I mean, maybe you're in a crowded place or on that beautiful hike or somewhere full of color. You can get creative, hold your phone out and see what you come up with with your front and rear cams. By the way, the app is free right now in the App Store. And we're finally at number five again. Speaking of Flickr, guess what Flickr just added to its iPhone app? Hmm, give up, give up. The ability to hashtag your photos. Add a hashtag in your photo's title or description or tap on a hashtag to see all the photos with the same hashtag. I know, you're probably saying, didn't Flickr already offer that sort of thing? Doesn't Flickr already have photo tags? Yeah, believe it or not, you couldn't actually add a linkable hashtag to a photo title or description until now in the iOS app. For hardcore Flickr users, this is gonna make it a lot easier to participate in, I don't know, something like Flickr Friday. That's a popular weekly photo challenge, but it's kind of helpful for all of us. What's interesting is the timing of all of this though. I mean, obviously Flickr's a Yahoo property. Just last week, rumors surfaced that Facebook was getting into hashtags as well. For those of us who use Twitter and are used to hashtags and how they work, we know it's not a perfect science. You can make a hashtag anything you like and it's not always going to contribute to overall category organization, but people definitely use them. And Flickr is smart enough to offer us functionality that we already get. Plus, the iPhone is still the most popular camera used on Flickr. We're an army, y'all. And thanks for watching this episode of i5, everybody. If you'd like to auto-download this show every week, just hit the subscribe button at twit.tv slash i5. That's where you can catch up on past episodes and find links to our featured apps, our tips, and our tricks, too. Tips and tricks are kind of the same thing, but whatever. Email us questions, tips, and app ideas to i5 at twit.tv. We love them. Keep them coming, everybody. Leave us a voicemail at 614-ON-I-5. That's 614-O-N-I-F-I-V-E. Or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you next week right here on i5 for the iPhone.